Hi, this is David from Electric Teaching, and this is part nine of my game, uh, Python game called Star Catcher. What we're going to be doing today is making uh, multiple targets using arrays instead of just using a single variable for the target. So that since this game is working pretty well as it is and can be used for uh, as a good reference tool down the road for your other programming adventures, I'd like to do a save as, and uh, because I'm going to make some changes here, so I'm just going to call it game two, Starcatcher game two here. The reason I'm making a copy by doing a save as is that I'm going to be taking a lot of this information like on target here and rewriting it so that it's in an array instead of a single variable and so I'm going to lose a lot of this information. Right off the bat I'm going to kind of move this uh, uh, target uh, loading information, this uh, comment line. I'm going to say load target in array and I'm going to move the fact that we're doing the player down here. So I'll just make some space and say, okay, load the player. Here. So we're going to load multiple targets, plural targets, in an array. Okay. First thing we've got to do is we've got to ask how many targets we're going to make. So I'm going to create a new variable called target number, or target num is what I like to use. So I'm going to make target num 10. So it starts off with the same idea, as, uh, or it starts off with 10 targets. Later we'll be able to change this to be as many targets as you want. Next, we're going to start a blank array, a blank array. So what I'm going to do is use the same name, target, but it's not going to be one single variable. It's going to be multiple things, so that's why I'm going to be using this array. I'm going to start a blank one, and then I'm going to enter in, using a for loop, uh, I'm going to append uh, the, the star images, or the loading of the star surfaces, uh, my target surfaces, into this array. Before I do this, I always like to show what it looks like in the shell area. So over here in the shell, I want to show you an example of working with these arrays. I'm going to make a simple array called A, and in a for loop for I in range, let's just make five of them right now, I will take the A empty array there, the empty array named A that I just made, and append a blank element spot for it so that I will put basically a blank bracket within the brackets up here. Um, then below that, for example, I will use another loop to put specific things into this blank array that I just made. So I'll do for j, I always like to use i, j, and k uh, for my incrementing. So in range, and let's just put two elements in this one, let's take the a sub i element, the a sub i element, which in this case is referring to which i am in, starting at zero, so this is the zero, if I can say that, the zero element um, at first, and then it's going to increment through the other four of them, total of five. And what I want to do here is I just want to append in it, since there's nothing in it, i got to append something to it. I'm going to append in it, uh, let's see, um, the value um, j so that it will basically be using the variable j, the same j that's up here, it'll basically put in 0 and then it'll put in a 1. So what I'm making here is an array that has 0, 1, 0, 1, 5 times. And as you see, I printed up the array a, and it did exactly that, 0, 1, 0, 1. So this is how we can build a two-dimensional array. Same idea. This is only going to be a one-dimensional array, so we'll need one loop here for i in range of however many you decided, target num. Then what I need to do is simply append uh, at the, the image loaded up in it. So before I do that, since I've got these transforming words down here, these transforming of my target image and creating a specific size, which is common and you might want to do the same, I'm going to take those lines, I'm going to paste them up here. I'm going to get my tabs right so that this is all within the for loop. I've already used the word target up here in the array, so I'm going to switch this to be more of a temporary variable called target image. So target image is loaded up, and then this transform line is going to be also target image. So putting target image right back into target image, but the transformed one. So it takes the it takes the target image, transforms it, which is making it a 20 by 20, and then throws it right back into the variable. Now that's the one I want to load up in the array. So I am going to append something to the target. So I'm going to 
say target, append, and give it a bracket. And then I'm going to place something right in it called the target image. So I'm going to say target a uh, bracket of I. Had to make the actual indices first. And then I'm going to append, let's see, uh, not append it, excuse me, assign it using the a variable signing equals the target image. Now for this, uh, for this task that I'm doing right here, this is loading the exact same star in my case, my star PNG, uh, in this case 10 times. So we're loading it up 10 times here, meaning we don't need to be using this information down here, which is based on the single variable target. And the target position is also something else I'm going to change. So I am going to delete all this stuff right here. I'm also going to take the time right now to delete the background blitting above because, as I said before in the previous videos, if you've been following along, that these aren't necessary. They, those were teaching moment blitz just to connect how we load the image, load the position, and blit it to the screen. Technically, we're blitting all this stuff every few milliseconds um, in our while loop down here where all the other, this is where the blitz really belong. So even the score text that I made in one of my last puns, one of my last videos, we don't need that. That's going to be uh, blitted down there in the while loop. So I've gotten rid of all those extra blitz because we are trying to make the game look a little more pro. And now we're going to deal with the target position array. Now this is going to be an array that's more like the one over here where it's got two dimensions within each one of the elements in the original array. So we already were dealing with target position and I just deleted that how that I had a target pause is equal to 2020. Now we're going to load up many different, uh, uh, many different, excuse me, um, uh, target positions inside an array called target pause. As always, I almost forgot here, we got to start the array. So target pause is now not a single variable, but an empty array at that moment. And then for in range, oops, for I in range, target num, same amount, that way I can change it with the single stroke of a variable up here. Okay, for that range, let's load up uh, some XY positions here. And what I'm going to do is first give myself a position. So target, pause, append, an empty bracket. Oops, got my shifts wrong there. There we go. And then for, for J in range of two for X and Y. So there's only two spots here. We will basically append um, very sim something similar to uh, our positioning before. And before I actually do that, I want to create a spacing of these targets. So I'm going to create a new variable here called target space. And it's going to be based on the height of the screen. Okay, and we're going to divide it by our total number of targets, so our target num. So let's say I have a height of, what do I have, 400 up here? So this will be 400 divided by 10. And this number will help me space it out based on that distance. So that distance is 40. I like to subtract off 10 because it's half of the actual target um, size. And that works out nicely for getting the spacing perfectly on the screen. So now I've created a target space. I don't want to do that in the loop. That's why I came up above and did it outside the loop. There's no reason to calculate that over and over again. That doesn't change. Um, so right here, we're going to say target, pause, but the ith position, so that it's now taking the position that was created right above based on i, and I'm going to use that, and I'm going to append, so there's nothing in it right now, parentheses, let's see, I'm going to append a nifty little formula here that I created, i star j star target space, Okay, which is what we say in our example, something like 40 minus 10 or 30. Okay, so that would be 30. And we're going to add 50 here. Now, the way this works is this will make, um, for the first element, the first time through with j equal 0. Now, j is equal to 0 every time the first time through. So first time through, i is 0, j is 0, so this whole value is 0. So the first thing it puts in is the 50, the leftover part there. So that means the x position will be 50. The second time through, j is changed to 1. 
but i still zero, so also the y position will be 50. Second time through the i loop, i is 1, j is back to zero. That means this will be zero again, and 50 will be in the x. Here's how we're going to increment the y. The second time through, which is going to be for our y position, j is 1. J is 1, I is 1, target space, which is 30, is going to be added, and so we'll knock it down 30 spaces using our target space, 30 pixels away from the last target split. This way, the target is blitted perfectly. We will blit the target down below in the while loop in a few minutes here, but right now we're just setting up the established position. So this works perfectly for spacing out my targets. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to see if I can get this targets to blit. So I'm going to do a couple things here. I'm going to get rid of target visible true because down the road we're going to be putting in an array to be equated or lined up with all this other target array information. And the same thing with speed, but speed right now is not going to be bothersome, so that won't affect our gameplay. And now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to change the way we're blitting it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take any statements that have to do with our old positioning, our old target visible, our old target stuff. I'm going to comment it out. So I'm going to comment out this whole region right here. Okay, and I'm going to put right here the actual array of blitting the targets. So this is where we're going to be doing our target blitting. I'm going to then go write a little comment here. Targets blitted through a for loop. So since we have as many targets as there are target numbers, I need to run this in a loop to run up to that number. For i in range of target num parentheses. So for i in range of target num, again, this is going to go through however many targets we have, I want to um, increment, no, I want to just blit it. So right now I'm going to do this command where I load up a temporary variable called, same one I used before, target image. It's okay to keep overlapping this variable. It's just temporary. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab from our target list, that's the array target, the ith image in there. And it puts it into target image variable. Similar idea, I'm going to take the X coordinate from above, and that is the target position, and you're going to learn how to call up a two-dimensional array. So I'm going to take the ith one, but I need the X coordinate, and in the second bracket, you put zero. So to refer to the first element, that was loaded up with that J in range of two. So what this says is, we'll just ask which target we're on, and this grabs the X coordinate of that target. Very similar, the Y is equal to target pause, bracket i, bracket, and then we're going to grab the y coordinate, which is in the one element of that. Now we're going to blit this. So we're going to say screen, very much like we've done before, blit. What are we blitting? Well, the target image, comma, and to the parentheses x, comma, y. Make sure you get the extra close parentheses. That's something I fix with my students all the time because we forget the close parentheses. Just like math, two open, two close. Okay, now I just need to make sure this works so I can test it to see if I get 10 targets on the left side of the screen. I do not want this to crash the program, so I need to comment out anything to do with our old variables. This is, and in fact, I'm going to write a comment line. This is where we've been bouncing off the sides of the screen. So this is the test for the sides of the screens. Just make a little comment on there, and now I'm actually going to comment the whole thing out because it will affect the way this will run. Down here, I'm also going to comment out the collision. We don't want to test that right now. Um, in my second part, the next part, which will be part 10, I will be changing these so that these all work with the array. So I think I got everything that I commented out that I needed to. What I'm hoping for is I'm just hoping to see that this runs and puts the images on the screen. So save, control S maybe, run, F5. And it worked. I got all 10 images nicely spaced on the left-hand left side of the screen. My player still moves around, but that's uh, because of the uh, fact that we haven't uh, commented out the player movement. Let me just show you what happens when we change the number. I'm going to change the number of targets to 5, and then you can see the spacing. I'm going to do a control, save, and F5, and you can see that it spaced out 5 targets perfectly. And this is how we're going to run multiple levels down the road. 
So part, two, part 10, the next part, I will be moving these guys, bouncing them off the walls, and, and, and at, making the collisions work again. I hope you're enjoying.